You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. There are only three questions worth asking. One, where did we come from? Two, what are we supposed to do while we're here? And three, what happens next? All the rest aren't important. It took me a while to figure that out. I, I didn't get it at first. None of us did. But then, who does? What? Where am I? Wait! Oh. Oh. What in the... Hey! Can anyone hear me? Is anybody up there? Hey! Can you hear me? I had no idea how I got there. I must have blacked out on the way down because all of a sudden I couldn't remember anything. Not even my name. There wasn't much light at the bottom, just a steady, even gray, like, like fog with the sun behind it, only very far away. The wall was curved a little and made of some kind of smooth metal. At least that's what it felt like. There was only one thing I could think of. If I was a prisoner, I had to get out. So I started exploring, feeling my way along. But I couldn't find a door, not even an edge to grab onto, nothing. I stopped to get my bearings, and then I heard it. Hooray, the fleet's in. Who are you? Oh, but it isn't the fleet, is it? It's the army. <laughs> then the army's in. Why are you dressed that way? What way? The makeup, the clothes. You, you look like a clown. You don't like my uniform? Oh, well, can't please all the people all the time. Nice uniform you have there. Hooray for the army. ta ra ra boom de yay At ten hut at your service. What are your orders, Colonel? General? Whatever you are. I'm a major. Oh, yes, I see that now from your collar. But don't fret about it. You can always advance, even in a peacetime army. Today a major, tomorrow a brigadier. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having you on the general staff. From major to brigadier, not bad. There's light colonel and colonel in between. You're generous, old sport. You're certainly gen Problem? No, no. No problem. It's, it's just that... Uh, just that what? A couple of small items seem to have eluded me for the moment. Such as? Such as... Who I am. Why, you're a major. According to your uniform, that's what you are. And that is what you said. Or are you impersonating an officer? That's a very serious charge, you know. Impersonating an officer. No, I... I am a major. Here's the insignia, so I know that much. But that's all I know. I, I must have been wounded or something. You seem to be intact. Then why can't I remember my name? I have no idea who I am. I don't remember my outfit or the action. Action? Which action was that? The engagement, the battle, wherever it was I got hit. Who says that happened to you? But I must have been wounded. Or at least I took a bump to the head. Did you hear cannon fire? Troops marching? Nothing like that, dear boy. It's been quiet as a tomb in here, which is restful after a fashion. Though it does get boring. Well, something happened to me. I gotta figure this out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What about you? That's a clue. Is there a, a circus in the area? A circus? What's with you? Look at yourself. The costume, the clown hat. Oh, I see. There must be a circus because I'm a clown. And clowns go with circuses. Everyone knows that. I guess it figures, doesn't it? But it should figure. A clown, a circus, an officer, a war. That's logical, except that it doesn't figure, not at all. Why not? Because, dear boy, there isn't any circus and there isn't any war. Then what are we doing here? Don't rack your brain, accept it. The truth is, you're just like the rest of us. You wake up and here you are. No reason, no explanation. You just wake up and here you are. Did you say the rest of us? See for yourself. See what? 
Come with me. I should have introduced you right off. Meet my friends, such as they are. This one we call the bagpipe player, for obvious reasons. Hello, laddie. And this is, well, I suppose one would call him a tramp or a hobo, judging from his stereotypical appearance. A familiar sight, no matter where one goes, wouldn't you agree? Hey, pal, you wouldn't have a drink, would you? And the most beautiful of us all, the ballet dancer. How do you do? How do you do? I'm... I'm... Don't worry about names. They don't remember theirs either. Gentlemen and lady, I'd like to introduce the Major. Hello. Meet our collection of walking, talking question marks. Five improbable entities who are all in the same predicament. Trapped side by side in a pit of light and darkness. No logic, no reason. Just a prolonged nightmare in which fear, loneliness, and the unexplainable walk hand in hand through the shadows. In a moment, we'll start collecting clues as to the whys, the whats, and the wheres. We will not end the nightmare. We'll only look more closely into the shadows in search of an explanation. Because you've already fallen with them, headlong and without a compass, into an uncharted region known as the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story... Five Characters in Search of an Exit. Starring Jason Alexander with Stacy Keach as your narrator. The clown was right. One was a bagpipe player, complete with plaid kilt. The tramp was, well, a tramp by the looks of him. And the ballet dancer really was beautiful. She had on a white leotard and one of those little ruffled skirts, uh, what do you call them, uh, tutus. The four of them acted like they weren't surprised to see me there. Not a bit. But why? Why weren't they? If you don't mind, would... Would someone please tell me? Or is it a secret? Tell you what, dear boy? What do you think? What's going on here? Uh, going? Going where, old boy? I don't know. What are we? Who are we? None of us know, Major. We don't know who we are. Each of us, each of us just woke up one moment and here we were, in the darkness. But this isn't really darkness. Not quite. I can see all of you and you can see me. It might as well be dark. The light, whatever it is, wherever it is, is so far away. I can't tell anymore if it's real or just something I'm imagining because I need it to be there instead of... Of... Of what? Of nothing. That's absurd. Is it? Each of you woke up, just like that. <laughs> Correct again. Give the man a cigar. But how did you get here? What were you before? Who put you in this place? You sure got a lot of questions. I told you, Major. We don't remember. Are you sure you didn't fall? We may have. The memory fades after a while. Well, that's how I got here. Did you? Yes, he did. He did indeed. I saw him. A nice pratfall, as a matter of fact. Quickly, before it fades, what's the last thing you remember before you fell? I don't know. I must be suffering from amnesia. Oh. Then you're like us. Time to join the big parade, Major. If you could find your hat and sword, you could lead us. Oh, what a splendid drum major you'd make. Followed closely by the clowns and acrobats, of course. This is... This is incredible. Oh, isn't it? What a troop we put together. The crowd will love us. But how did this happen? How could it? That's the same question we asked ourselves. How could it happen? A question with no answer, Major. A question with no hint of an answer. At least, not a rational one. Nonsense. Everything has an answer. You just have to find it. Consider all the evidence, sift through the clues. Oh, is it this exciting? Where do you want to look first? It doesn't matter. Of course it does. Please, try to understand what I'm saying. It will be easier for you that way. We're things with no memory, no knowledge of what went before. 
no understanding of what is now, no knowledge of what will come. How long... how long have you been here? Hey, it's part of the mystery, too. We don't know nothing. At least I don't. You got any ideas? No. No idea at all. Then don't fight it. Live it or live with it. Know what I mean? Whoever left us here must have a plan. How long will we be here until the next phase? Now that's a very good question. The best question of all. But alas, no one has the answer. You mean you don't? Who else is there? We've discussed it and discussed it like a proper committee, and we're no further along than we were at the beginning. Talk, talk, and more talk. So I ask you, man to man, clown to officer, what's the point? Sit down, Major. Conserve your energy. For what? For whatever the fates have in store. I suggest you listen to the beauteous ballerina and fasten your seatbelt, because we may be in for a very bumpy ride. Or then again, perhaps not. Perhaps what will happen is only more of the same. Perhaps we're all doomed to die of terminal boredom. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Active fellow. Very active fellow. Very much army, in other words. A man who has to do something, anything. A compulsive type. A regular worker ant. Oh, you're a big time psychologist now, huh? By no means. I'm only a clown, which is neither here, there, nor anywhere. I could as easily be a financier, a certified public accountant, or a left-handed pitcher who throws only curves. What difference does it make? We're here because we're here because we're here. And what are you? You're an idiot. An energetic idiot, but an idiot nonetheless. You know you're wasting your time, don't you? I know I want out of here. I'm not satisfied sitting around and heaving deep sighs. I just want out. You have no monopoly on that, Major. We all want out of here. I second that emotion. Aye, but you're wasting your time. We've all gone around and around like bloodhounds with our noses to the wall. We can even give you the dimensions of the room. Thirty-nine feet. Starting where? It doesn't matter, does it? When you measure a circle, you may start anywhere. Am I right or am I right? What's the height? We figure about forty feet to the top. What's up there? Oh, the sky, artificial light... Maybe a fluorescent lamp, an illuminated microscope, you name it. One guess is as good as another. You have made guesses, then? Oh, all kinds. We could be on some other planet, or on a spaceship, or... Go ahead. Or we're all insane, and this is just a mirage, an illusion. Oh, we're dead. Dead to the world. Well, if we are... It certainly isn't heaven. How do you know? It ain't so bad. I've been in lots worse places than this. Limbo, then? Quite possibly. All together now. Limbo, limbo, limbo lock me. Limbo, limbo, limbo lock me. Or we really don't exist. We're figures in somebody's dream. Cogito ergo sum. I exist, therefore I am. Or each of us is having a dream. And everyone is a figment of someone else's imagination. Lots of possibilities. Makes your head want to blow up, don't it? That's one thing we have an abundance of. Possibilities. An infinite number of possibilities. What about getting out of here? Anyone examine that as a possibility? <laughs> have you? It's a solid wall. No crevices, no outjuttings of any kind. Nothing to hold on to or scrabble over or get your fingers around. Time to face the music, Major. We're trapped down here. There is absolutely, positively, no way out. A nightmare, then. That's all it is. A nightmare. It is indeed. But whose? Yours? Mine? The Scotsman? The ballet dancer? Just whose nightmare is it? Can you tell me that? It doesn't add up. Someone knows we're here. Of course. We do. <laughs> I mean someone else. Why do you say that? They have to. You've all been here a while, possibly quite a long while. So someone must feed you, someone must give you water. Yeah, well... <laughs> you would have thought so, wouldn't you? <laughs> Don't go jumping to conclusions now, laddie. Hold on. 
Someone must bring down food, or you couldn't survive. There's been no food, no water. That's impossible. <laughs> oh, is it really? In that case, we'll starve to death, or die of thirst, or... That's the oddest thing of all. What is? Don't you understand yet? No, no, I don't understand. Why don't you tell me? Do you feel hunger, Major? Or thirst? Or heat? Or cold? Or fatigue? Discomfort of any kind? Or anything? Do you feel anything at all? No. No, I don't. But that doesn't prove anything. This has been uh, a trauma. It's natural that I don't feel thirsty or hungry. Not yet. I, I, I'm in a state of shock. Close, but no cigar. You were born in a state of ignorance, educated in the school of hard knocks, and got your degree at the street corner university. Now you're ready to graduate to oblivion. What do you say? Let's break out the booze and have a bowl. <laughs> None of us have felt thirst or hunger or anything else since we've been here. And we've been here for an endless time, Major. I can tell you that. Time without measure. What's wrong with you people? Have you tried shouting, calling for help? Endlessly. Well, then, have you pounded on the wall like this to get their attention? I mean loud. I'm talking about taking off your shoes and really pounding. Have you done that? Often. Well, well have, you, have you looked all the way around? Have you, have you felt every square inch of the wall? Maybe there's, maybe there's a control button or a panel of some kind, a hidden panel, or a lever, something. Yeah. Yeah, sure. At the start, that's all we did. Hunted and searched and peered and felt with our hands. And you know what we found out? Sure you do. We found out that this, this right here, is the whole shooting match. This little room. What you see is what you get, Major. There ain't no more. Stop! Stop up there! Well, are you going to tell me? Tell you what, Major? What was that? That noise? It happens from time to time. A giant bell or something. That's what it sounds like. Yes, but what is it? <laughs> Another question, eh, boy? One more question without an answer. Oh, then this is a madhouse. That's what it is. A madhouse. You're all loonies. You might be right, Major. But remember one thing. Whoever's ringing that bell, for whatever purpose... I think it would be safe to say that honestly and truly, absolutely and positively, it tolls for thee. <laughs> hey! Hey up there! It's no use. Let us out! Let us out of here! What do you want from us, please? Just let us out! Are you okay? Don't be afraid, Major. Take my hand. Where? Here. Please don't be afraid. In the beginning, in the beginning, it's, it's hard. But after a while... There must be... There must be a way, something we can do. There has to be. This sort of thing, this... This sort of thing just doesn't happen. A few more like that, and it'll wreck my bagpipe. You there, girl. What is it? Why don't you dance for us? Leave her alone. It'll make the time pass. A capital idea. I'll play a tune. I've already danced for you. It doesn't do any good. Don't be modest. The Major's never seen you dance. How about it? The Major doesn't want to see her dance. Careful. You'll hurt her feelings. The Major's not interested in passing the time. All the Major wants to do is get out of here. And how do you propose to do that? All right. It's smooth. Absolutely smooth. Unbroken. And high. Too high. Not even a place for a foothold. Nothing. That means... We have to go through the wall. With what? Did you ever think of that, huh? A hole through the wall? Or what about the floor? What about it? If the wall is solid, smash a hole in the floor and tunnel out. 
Easier said than done. At least give it a chance. We don't know how thick it is. The wall or the floor. Or even what they're made of. Then find out. Find out. Don't just... Don't just sit there like, like lumps. Like things. Like mindless, soulless things. Playing your bagpipe. Telling her to dance. What's wrong with you? If this is a madhouse, maybe that's where you deserve to be, in a madhouse. And what about you, body boy? I think you're mad, all of you. I think you're out of your ever-loving heads. I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> Try a hole through the wall, right about here. That's the first thing to do. Try to force a way through it. Industrious, isn't he? How about it, huh? A hole through the wall. See if we can get out that way. That's very bright. Terribly ingenious. Highly imaginative. Incredibly inventive. <laughs> Except for one thing. With what? With our bare hands? With our fingernails? With this. Why, wherever has your sword been all this time? It must have come off my belt when I fell into this place here. <laughs> Watch this. Now you've gone and broken it, dear boy. Nice sword, I must say. Was it Sheffield steel or only pot metal? No. I will not have this. I will not have it. Major, please, Major, listen to me. After a while, after a while, it becomes easier. I promise. I need to make a plan. I need to do something. Perhaps, perhaps there have always been dungeons like this. And we've just never heard of them before. Maybe they're for... for the unloved. Maybe that's what we are. The unloved. Don't let me hear you talk that way. Come here. Get a hold of yourself. Think. Don't be afraid. We have names. We're people. And that means we belong somewhere. Do we? There are others who care about us. You can count on that. Somewhere, somehow, we've got a life of our own, each of us, and people who care and remember out there. And we'll find them again, together. Do you really think so? I'm sure of it. A tunnel. That's what we'll do. We'll dig a tunnel. The boy simply doesn't give up, does he? I've got it. Got what, pal? I know where we are. It suddenly occurs to me. <laughs> it's... It's funny none of you ever thought of it, but it has to be. Where? Where are we? Why, my dear young lady. How unobservant of you. When the whole thing fits together so... perfectly. Do you need me to draw you a picture? Please tell me. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems quite apparent, doesn't it? Absolutely unequivocal. We, all of us, are in hell. God, God help us. We are in hell. Never say die, that one. He'll come to accept it eventually, just as we did. Yeah, let him be. If he gets some satisfaction out of banging a broken sword on the floor, well, let him have his fun. At least he's trying. He is indeed. He's been trying for several hours now. You can't help but admire that kind of persistence, even though it's a little like trying to empty an ocean with a cup or count the grains of sand in a desert or reach up to touch the stars. So, let him dip and count and reach all he wants. Of course, it won't help, but I fail to see how it could hurt under the circumstances. <sighs> it's metal, or the hardest wood I've ever come across. Circular, perfectly smooth, with no breaks anywhere. All of which we could have told you some hours ago. Which we did tell you, if you'd bothered to listen. We've got to figure out something else. Oh, do, do. Maybe we could wish it all away using the power of positive thinking. That's enough. Or bore through it with our X-ray eyes. 
Anyone have a laser beam handy? I said that's enough. Or make believe we're acrobats. You know all about that, right? Clowns, acrobats? Most definitely. Alley oop and over the top to freedom. <laughs> now you got it. <laughs> yeah, you got it, all right. Dreaming and wishing, wishing and dreaming. Hold on. Listen to the man. Oh, come now. In the final analysis, this is all rather idiotic. Is it? It only requires a moment's reflection to see. Why not? Why not what? What you said. Acrobatics! A figure of speech, my dear, not meant to be taken seriously. Isn't it? I will grant you that we have somehow forfeited some of our human dignity, but we are nonetheless governed by human frailties, not the least of which is gravity. You may know some advanced acrobatics that I'm quite unaware of, but for the moment, unless you can find a circus gun big enough to launch one of us skyward like a human cannonball... I see what she's getting at. ...will kindly elucidate, if you please. Don't any of you see? Yes, of course. One on top of the other, standing on each other's shoulders. What about that? It's the way they do it in the circuses, isn't it? Is that query directed at me? You're a clown, aren't you? I'll ask one if I see him. I can assure you I may wear the costume of a clown, but I have no recollection whatsoever of having been one, if ever I was. Then the only thing you ever were was a coward. That's uncalled for. Consider the consequences. We may not feel thirst or hunger, but the pain of a broken bone is quite another thing. We might very well feel pain, and a fall from, what, 10, 15 feet up, down to this hard floor, well, that's a sensation I'd as soon do without. It's a chance. With all due respect, miss, no thank you. She's right. It is a chance. Consider the consequences of not trying. It won't work. The weight will be on the first person, so I'll bear the brunt of it. That light's too far away. Come on. The clown on top of me, then the tramp, then the bagpiper, then the dancer. What do you say? Uh, we'd never reach it. Well, never say never. We don't know how high it is. That's the point. We'd be exerting ourselves for nothing. It could be a hundred feet up there for all we know, or two hundred or three hundred. But we got nothing to lose, right? Why don't we sit down and have some entertainment instead? A much safer course of action. Why don't we go for it? Come on, clown, up on my shoulders. Oh, observation. Things were far simpler before you arrived. However, I suppose I must go with the majority. Get a foot on my shoulder. I'll boost you up. Careful now. That's it. My turn? Not yet. The bagpiper next. Give me a hand, laddie. Use the wall for leverage. I can barely manage. But it's holding. All right, miss. It's up to you. How high is it? Can you see an, an edge or anything yet? I guess seven or eight feet to the top. Maybe more. Maybe less. Come on, I can't hold this weight forever. Go very carefully, one step at a time. You'll make it. Thank God she's so light. Whoa! That's my nose you're stepping on. Now stretch! I am stretching. All the way up. Now, what do you see? I, I can't quite reach it. It's still oh, about eight or ten inches above me. Up on your toes. That's it. I'm almost there. Everybody straighten. All I need is a, a few more inches. No! No! We were so close. Yes. I think we were. We'll try again. Nonsense. We could have broken our necks. But we didn't. I, for one, am not trying it again. How much farther? How much more would it have taken? Only a few inches. I could almost, almost feel it. What if... What if what? I respect persistence as much as the next man, but stupidity, that happens to be a waste of time. A useless expenditure of energy. If we were just a few inches shy, if that's all it took, I could straighten up more on the bottom. We could each straighten an inch, two inches. That would give her the height she needs. Let's go. One more time. My dear young warrior... Would that you had not arrived. Things were so much more peaceful before. Why not? We got something else to do? Not that I can think of. Please, I was so close. And heaven help us all. Leave us give it the old college try. Oh, 
Come on. All right, steady oh, now. Oh, steady. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, just yes. a little more. Okay. All right. Watch the foot. Oh, no. oh, okay. There you go. Oh. This is as tall as I can stand. Quite an exercise for the lowest spine, I must say. Now, young lady. Here she goes. Oh, there's a rim of some sort. Yes, I think I have it. Now pull yourself up. Hold on. Yes, by all means. Oh, I can't. How's the leg, miss? The knee's twisted, I think. But it'll be all right. You were almost there. You had your fingers over the ledge. A miss is as good as a mile. Not in this case. A miss by about two or three inches? <laughs> That's hardly a mile. This is what we do next. Oh, share your plan, pray tell. The same thing. Without the dancer. Then we'll be several feet short. No, we won't. Hear me out. The clown, the tramp, the bagpipe player... And then I'll climb to the top. I'll tie a rope to the haft of this sword, fling it over the edge. Let it catch there like a grappling hook. Now that's thinking. Ingenious. But first, hadn't one of us better run over to the hardware store and pick up the rope? He's right. There's no rope around here. Strips of cloth. Torn from what we're wearing. You mean tear our clothing? It's a chance. And a good one. Yours has the most material. You said yourself you don't feel the cold. So give me those balloon sleeves. The things we do for a man in uniform. Six feet of excellent material, courtesy of Pagliacci, or whoever I am. Good, but I need more. Twist it and start tying it together. Big knots. That's it. Takes me back to my Boy Scout days. Were you a Boy Scout? Who knows? I might have been. I got one question for you. Aye? What the heck is a Boy Scout? Anybody remember? We're almost ready. Now this time... We make it. The rope tied to the sword and over the top of the ledge. It catches and I'm up and out. And then what? We'll worry about that when it happens. Somehow I will get you out of here. All of you. But nobody gets out until one of us does. Now that's logic you can live with, right? If we live. You, Tramp, it's time. Indeed. Leave us, get on with it. I can't take this much longer. Good luck, Major. Thanks. I'll need it. Uh, uh, all right, all right. Easy. Now swing that rope, man. You can do it. Right him, cowboy. You got it. Almost. Watch out below. One more time, Major. I believe in you. Second time's the charm. Good show. I believe he's done it. How does it feel? Tight. I think it'll hold. Then go. Major, you don't know how spectacular you look. At least the weight's off. Quick, everybody down before we fall down. Got the ledge. There. Yes. If I can pull one leg up. No. Well, what's there? What do you see? Major, Major, you've got to tell us. Where are we? No, 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 no. And I knew then what I had known all along, but didn't want to face. Some things, I guess, are too fierce to handle in one bite. I heard the wind, and I saw, finally saw, where I was, where we all are. I wished the four of them well. If you see my friends, will you tell them I love them? Because the truth is this. There are only three questions worth asking. One, where did we come from? Two, what are we supposed to do while we're here? And three, what happens next? All the rest aren't important. I didn't get it at first, but then, who does? Maybe it's better that way. No! 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 He made it. I don't believe it. I do. A brave man. Very brave. But not a very bright one. I wonder if we'll see him again. He'll be back. I know he'll be back. 
And then what, dear lady? He'll come and get us. You think so? He may be back, but it won't be to get us. How can you say that? I'm beginning to get a feeling. And not a very nice one, I'm sorry to say. All the little details, they're starting to fit together. This place, our costumes, the bell. He may have been right at that. What do you mean? He may have been right all along. This may very well be a, a kind of hill. At least for us. <laughs> One from which there really is no escape. No escape at all. <laughs> Look, what do you have there? I found it in the snow. Someone oh. must have dropped it. Oh, thank you, dear. Just drop it in the barrel there, would you? He looks like a soldier, but his coat's all torn. That's all right. Someone will sew him a new one. I'm sure he'll make some little boy very happy. Wow, you got lots of dolls in there. Not as many as we'd like. They're for the orphans, you know. But it's early, and we've just started. Can I have one? Are you an orphan? Well, no. But I like the ballerina. She's so pretty. Oh, yes. She is, isn't she? What's that on her face? Hmm? See? On her eye. It looks like a real tear. Is she crying? No, why would she be crying? It's just a snowflake that started to melt. I suppose you could have her if you promised to give her a good home. Mm, no. I think I better leave her here. Are you sure? She doesn't want to go. See? She's holding hands with that soldier doll. Why, aren't you the nicest little girl? Toys for Christmas. Toys for Christmas. Open your hearts, friends, and bring in your old dolls so the underprivileged little ones can have a happy Christmas, too. Help the Salvation Army. Dolls for Christmas. Dolls for Christmas. Dolls for Christmas. Just a barrel, a dark depository in which reside counterfeit, make-believe pieces of plaster and cloth and plastic wrought in the distorted image of human life. But this added hopeful note. Perhaps they are unloved only for the moment. In the arms of children, there can be nothing but love. A clown, a tramp, a bagpipe player, a ballet dancer, and a major. Our cast of players on a very odd stage known as the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at TwilightZoneRadio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. Five Characters in Search of an Exit, starring Jason Alexander with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling, based on a story by Marvin Peddle. Heard in the cast were Kathy Garver, David Darlow, Doug James, Christian Stolte, Frenette Lebo, and Amanda Omari. To learn more about The Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>